Why did Tony Blair take Britain into war with Iraq in 2003? What did the intelligence say about Saddam Hussein's supposed weapons of mass destruction? He has existing and active military plans for the use of chemical and biological weapons, which could be activated within 45 minutes. Did Tony Blair lie to Parliament and the British people in order to stay close to President Bush? Questions that divided Britain at the time and have haunted it ever since. The Chilcot inquiry was only meant to last a year. Government ministers, soldiers, civil servants all gave evidence. So did Tony Blair, twice, unrepentant, unapologetic. Well, isn't that about a, a lie or a conspiracy or a deceit or a deception? It's a decision. And the decision I had to take was, given Saddam's history, given his use of chemical weapons, given the over one million people whose deaths he caused, given, given 10 years of breaking UN resolutions, could we take the risk of this man reconstituting his weapons programs? The final report has been so delayed, says this soldier who fought in Iraq, that it has lost much of its relevance. I think is actually one of the tactics of this elongated Chilcot report is to kind of put it on the long handle, which is a classic British establishment trick, is to um, make sure the, the sort of investigation lasts so long that people have moved on, on to other things. The inquiry also examined what happened after the invasion, the years of occupation around Basra, where the British were based. 179 British soldiers died, a small number compared to Iraqis, but each one a family's tragedy. Peter Brearley's son, Sean, was killed in the first days of the war. Thankfully, he says, before many of the controversies and doubts set in. He would not have fought that, that, a war under, under that, all those circumstances had he known. So as I say, it's a terrible thing to say, if he had to die, I'm glad he died when he did. Some opponents of the Iraq war hope that this report will pave the way to legal action against its perpetrators. But the International Criminal Court has already said that the legality of the decision to invade Iraq is outside its jurisdiction. The British public have grown increasingly cynical and distrustful of their politicians in recent years. But if this report is widely perceived to be fair and hard-hitting, it could restore some credibility to British political life. All of which will provide little comfort or interest to the people of Iraq their country still ravaged by war, in large part as a direct consequence of the 2003 invasion. Barnaby Phillips, Al Jazeera, Westminster in central London.